Hi friends, I'm Phil and I'm a poet just like you. Thank you for being here today and joining me in my poetry workshop. Today, I'd like to talk to you about an emotional tool, a happiness hack, a fun little game that each of us can play that can make our lives even better. It's really powerful. It can change our attitude in a matter of moments. It can help us think more positively more often. And what's even better? It's actually fun. It's kind of like throwing a party. I love parties. With a pencil. I love pencils. <laughs> can we stop? In fact, if you want, we could throw a little pencil party right now. If you want to play along right now, you'll need a pencil and a notebook or a blank piece of paper. You can pause this video, but first, let me make a silly face. Ready? <laughs> Am I unpaused yet? Okay, great. A pencil party is pretty simple. The most important part is figuring out who or what you're going to invite. I want you to think about something you like, something you have or get to do, or someone you're glad is part of your life. We're gonna pick one thing and write it down. Got it? Nice. Now uh, let's put some exclamation points on there. How great is your thing? Does it make your life better? I want you to say thank you to it out loud. Go ahead, we can all talk at once. Thank you, veggie burritos. If your person or thing is around, great. If not, no worries. Now that you figured out the first person or thing that you want to invite to your pencil party, can you think of any others? It can be something silly, someone important, something really specific. Think about the things you like and write some down in any order at all. All right, and once you have your list, throw some exclamation points on there. Okay, just finished. If you're still writing, you can totally pause this video for a minute while you finish. But first, Unpaused? Great. All right, now I want you to say thank you to all the things on your list. We can all talk at the same time. Ready? Go. Thank you, Veggie Burrito. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, family. Thank you, peanut butter and banana sandwiches. Thank you, poetry. Thank you, giant. Really? <laughs> of course. Where would we be without you? That is so nice. Thank you, exclamation points. Thank you, ukulele. Thank you to all my friends here right now. And thank you to this show for giving us all a good reason to hang out. In fact, while we're talking about it, I am so grateful to be here for another episode of Poet Show It. I'm a poet. You're 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 a poet. So come and show it. You're a poet. Throwing a pencil party is kind of amazing for a lot of reasons. I'll give you five. One, it's fun to think about the things we like. That's why we like them. Two, saying thank you to the things we have and enjoy helps us remember how lucky we are. Three, when we're grateful for people or giants and we tell them, it makes them feel great too. Four, while a normal party will end, a pencil party is always there and you can jump back in at any time. Number five, if you throw a pencil party in your notebook, you now have an amazing list of things to write poems about, things you love. Take some time and throw a pencil party. If you're inspired to write a poem about it or something on the list and you'd like to share it with me and maybe all of us, you can get your parents' help to go to poetshowit.com to send it in.
it looks like I'm going to be adding four more things to my pencil party today because we have four amazing poems by four amazing poets, all talking about things that they're grateful for. So let's get started. Poem number one, Pink Blanky by Sophie. Sophie is in Mrs. Massarello's class at Weber Elementary. If you're going to list out a bunch of things you're grateful for, things that make you feel comfortable have to be on the list. Whether that's a new pair of sneakers or having a friend with you when you go somewhere new, feeling comfortable is so important. And based on this poem, Sophie knows all about that. Pink Blanky is so fun, she snuggles me at night. When she is so fuzzy, she gives me a delight. Pink Blanky is so friendly, she comforts me at night. She makes me want to smile when we turn off the light. Pink Blanky is so warm, she's lumpy like a sheep. She's soft in the morning when I am asleep. What a wonderful poem. I feel all snuggled up just reading it. Sophie's poem is all about her pink blankie, and she doesn't waste any time at all jumping into all the reasons she loves it. But she does something else really well in this poem, too. She uses a great rhyme scheme. Ooh, let's talk about rhyme scheme for just a minute. A rhyme is two words that sound the same. A rhyme scheme is all about where you put those words in the poem. When breaking down the rhyme scheme of a specific poem, we use letters in alphabetical order to designate each line. And lines that end with rhyming words are given the same letter. Does that make sense? Let's look at Pink Blanky. In the first stanza, the end words are fun, night, fuzzy, and delight. So if we were breaking down the rhyme scheme, the first line, fun, we'd give the letter A. And the second line, night, we'd give the letter B. The third line ends with fuzzy, but fuzzy doesn't rhyme with fun or night, so that gets the letter C. The fourth line, delight. See, delight rhymes with night, so we give that the letter B just like night. So we would say this stanza has an A, B, C, B rhyme scheme because the second and fourth lines rhyme with each other. Rhyme scheme is one way that poets can build rhythm and patterns into their poems, which helps make them more fun to read. If you'd like to learn more about rhymes and rhyme scheme, keep an eye on the channel because I'm going to have a new video all about them coming up soon. Sophie does a great job of using rhyme scheme through the poem, but she also uses great language to talk about her blankie, which clearly she loves very much. She calls the blankie fun and fuzzy and friendly. And I really like how instead of saying she snuggles with her blankie, she talks about how her blankie snuggles her. It kind of gives the blankie a sense of agency or personality. And it really helps emphasize how much she feels protected by it. In addition, Sophie refers to the blankie as a she throughout the poem, really personifying it. And I absolutely love the line, she's lumpy like a sheep. It's such a good simile because a sheep is lumpy, but also really soft and fluffy. So it conjures up great imagery for this blankie. This poem paints an amazing picture of a fun, fuzzy, friendly, warm, lumpy, soft blankie. And it's making me a little tired. Great work, Sophie. Thank you so much for sharing this amazing poem with us. Poem number two, Bike Ride by Gabes. Gabes is in Mrs. Backer's class at Beechwood Elementary. Sophie's poem, Pink Blankie, was all about how much she loved and appreciated her pink blankie. At first glance, Gabe's poem is very similar, but there's a very distinct difference. Let's see if you can pick it out. I swish by, pedaling fast. I can use my energy instead of a motor. I can feel the wind blowing in my face, trying to push me back. But I feel like I'm going super speed. Even though the motorcycle is faster, I am using my energy to zoom past. I am breathing heavy, but quiet. He's loud. Everyone would hear him coming. He needs gas to make it go. But it seems like a good lunch was all I needed. 
What an amazing, active poem. Like I said, at first glance, it seems very similar to Pink Blanky. But did you pick out the main difference? Let's look at some of the awesome descriptions and action words and the way Gabe's writes them to enhance their meaning in the poem. I swish by pedaling fast. I can use my energy instead of a motor. I feel like I'm going super speed. I'm using my energy to zoom past. These are all amazing descriptors. And if you're like me, when you first started reading this poem, you thought it was going to be about how much Gabe's loves his bike. And I'm sure he does, but that's not what the poem's about. This poem is really all about how much Gabe's loves all the things his bike lets him do. He uses action words, and really he's always talking about the things that he's doing on the bike. If this was a poem about his bike, we would expect him to use descriptive words about the, the color and the wheels. But this poem is about what he can do on the bike. He's grateful for his own power and abilities and how fast he can go on his bike. What an awesome thing to be grateful for. And if it wasn't in your pencil party to begin with, I don't think it was in mine. It should be. We should always be grateful for all of the amazing things that we're capable of doing. He also makes a number of great comparisons to a motorcycle, which works perfectly for what he's trying to explain. More often than not, great comparisons come from finding something that is similar enough and only different in the ways that you're focusing on. He could have said that his bike ride wasn't as loud as a tugboat or fireworks, but a motorcycle looks similar and accomplishes the same thing. It still takes you somewhere on two wheels. All of his descriptions are incredible, but the ending of this poem is hilarious. He's still comparing his bike ride to the motorcycle riding nearby when he says, he needs gas to make it go, but it seems like a good lunch was all I needed. It's so funny. It's so true. And it's another great example that this poem is really all about Gabe's. Amazing poem, Gabe's. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. Poem number three. Dogs and Cats by V. V is in Mrs. Helmstetter's class at Weber Elementary. During our pencil party, I mentioned we could write our lists in any order. We weren't comparing or ranking anything or picking favorites. Of course, when people are picking favorites, one of the classic questions is, are you a dog person or are you a cat person? Let's see how V approaches the topic. Cats are fluffy. They are also cute. But don't forget about dogs. They're awesome too. Dogs are funny, smart too. I love them both. What about you? Personally, I think V has the right idea. I don't think you have to pick what kind of animal is your favorite. If you're an animal person, that is good enough for me. And I love how V starts off talking about cats and then quickly switches to, but don't forget about dogs. <laughs> the entire poem is so conversational and casual. She uses some great adjectives to talk about what she loves about the animals. Fluffy, cute, awesome, funny, smart. And one thing that I think is really clever, I love how she uses the word to, T-O-O -O, as in also, in a way where she's adding descriptors to the animal she's talking about. They're awesome too, they're funny, smart too, but it could also imply that she's using those descriptors to talk about the other animal that she's not referencing at the moment, the cat. Cats are fluffy, they are also cute, but dogs are awesome too. Dogs are funny and smart too. Is she saying more words about dogs? Is she saying it about cats? Is she saying it about both? The entire poem feels very even-handed in how it describes both animals. And she even ends the poem with a question. She makes it clear that her decision isn't definitive. She wants to know what you think. Amazing poem, V. Thank you so much for sending it in. Poem number four. Candy by Cloudy. Cloudy is in Ms. Freeman's class at Carpenter Elementary. When Cloudy was filling out her pencil party, I'm pretty sure I know what she was writing first and second and probably third. I love candy. 
Who loves candy? Ice cream. Chocolate bars. Oh, who loves candy? I love candy. Oh, come on. Just end the story. Candy is the best story. Did you know I love candy? Oh, 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 rainbow candy. I don't care. Just please give me candy. Whoa, Cloudy. Sounds like someone may have gotten their hands on some candy already. This poem has so much energy, it cannot be contained. Cloudy does a great job of jumping right into the poem and then finding different ways to phrase saying how much she loves candy. I love candy. Who loves candy? Candy is the best. Did you know I love candy? The energy doesn't let up. The entire poem feels like a sugar rush. Oh, 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 rainbow candy. I don't care. Just please give me candy. This poem is really good at capturing a feeling and desire in the moment. The feeling of really wanting candy. But it also shows us how much fun it can be to write about things that we really love. Thank you, Cloudy, for sharing your love of candy with all of us. And thank you all. I am so grateful that you all joined me in the poetry workshop today. We got to read about how much our poets love their pink blankies, and bike rides, their dogs and cats, equally. And candy reminds me that we have a lot to be grateful for. I hope you'll throw a pencil party of your own, say thank you to the people and things that you love and care about, and maybe write a poem about them. If you do, and you'd like to share it with me, and maybe all of us, you can get your parents' help to go to poetshowit.com to send it in. From the Poetry Workshop, I'm Phil. I'll see you next time. And until then, keep writing. <laughs>